Uh, here, come up from over there. Into the scene. So, I thought I would kill two birds with one stone with little mocha here because I need to keep her company <laughs> or I want to keep her company. I suppose she could be back here all alone, but I think I have a preference to keep her company because uh, she hasn't been back here much and I wouldn't. I wouldn't want anything weird to happen and you know something that she discovers on her own. Since I'm back here and I'm just hanging out with her, uh, I've already done a little training video with her that you guys will see hopefully tomorrow. And uh, working on blankets. Oh, no. um, but I thought I would do a Q&A, uh, a live Q&A and answer some questions that I'm getting a lot of and I can reference in comments this video. Um, a lot of new viewers, so welcome to everybody who's new here. Uh, we are growing at a nice rate again. And in turn, obviously there's a lot of people that want to know more about what's going on. Primarily with her because she's the newest member here. So, fast questions and answers. I'm going to do that and I'll check the live chat to see if there's anything in there. Now, the first question that I can easily answer that gets asked a lot is uh, where did she come from? Who is she? Kind of idea. So little baby Mocha here is uh, a BC Wildy, which is kind of a Canadian Mustang. And she's come from the east side of British Columbia, Canada. So British Columbia is a province on the west coast. I go like this because I can picture a map in my head. It's the west coast on the left hand side of Canada. Um, near the ocean and uh, it, it covers all the way to the next province over which is Alberta who also has their own set of wildies uh, that are under better protection than our BC ones. The BC ones aren't protected at all um, and as such they live on reserves and uh, each year some get rounded up because there's just too many to live there uh, and the only other option is to try to get on the crown land which is Canada land but the Canadian government doesn't want them there so it's a death sentence anyways. So no matter what, there's going to be horses that either get adopted or go for slaughter because they, they breed faster than the available land is there. It's unfortunate. It's just the nature of humans. We can't do anything about it. For everybody that has complained in the comments section, please stop complaining here. There's nothing I can do. The best I can do is save you know, one at a time uh, as money and space allows and sometimes doesn't allow <laughs> for that matter. So she's come from the northeast, the east sort of northish uh, area of British Columbia, not far north, but east and a little north kind of idea, um, almost parallel to us. And um, she's come off a reserve out there. She's captured at 11 months, and we quickly went and picked her up, um, probably a week or two into her capture, from her capture date to the facility that she's at, called Born Free. Deep. Born Free Equine, run by Candy. I've done a bunch of stuff on the second channel. You can check out the interview there. And um, so she's there for, I think, a week or two. And then we went and got her, brought her here. She's been here now, I think, for three weeks. Three weeks, a month? It's getting close to a month. I think it's a month. I don't even know. Time just flies by for me. Um, she um, is now a year old. So she's a, a, a one-year-old and learning a heck of a lot but that's who she is we named her mocha uh, because she's brown i guess <laughs> i don't know why my daughter called her mocha i said sure mocha sounds good so that's where she's come from who she is um, we're doing a lot of work right now uh, active work but up until now which is the next question that comes up is like what are you doing or what's going on with uh, health so i'll just give all around general health update um she when while these show up here They've usually got uh, ticks, they've usually got lice, they have worms, um, and some of them have other little problems here and there. Uh, we don't inspect the horse before we get him. A lot of people ask that question, do you have any criteria? Nope, we just kind of say, that one. 
whatever feels good. In the case of Mr. Wilde, he was one of two horses, and the other one was a pregnant mare that looked on her last leg. Um, and uh, I think she ended up being on her last leg. She, she, I don't know what happened with her, but I don't think it went too well. I'm not really sure, actually. Hard to look up. So he was pretty much one of two, and uh, that's how that worked out. I didn't even, it didn't occur to me to, no inspection or anything like that. Just, what? Will you stop pushing into me? Back up. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Annie was the last of a group of horses that were not, um, that were all adopted out except for her, so she was just last. And then she was in a group of four others, so she was one of five, and we just said, she looks cute, this is her. So health-wise, uh, we didn't really think a lot about what they are, what, if they've got any problems. But there are the general problems, we have the lice, ticks, worms, so parasites, um, bots as well, so lots of deworming, uh, which is slow and steady over a five-day course. And then she has a uh, hernia, uh, an umbilical cord hernia, supposedly. We don't know exactly, but that's the exact location where it's at. And uh, she had an infection. So you, you discover an infection through uh, taking the temperature, taking a blood test, and also the, the hernia itself is quite inflamed and warm and, and painful to touch. You could tell she was quite uncomfortable with the uh, handling any part there. So antibiotics for 10 or 11 days. Um, And then, you want some help? You look like you can't quite read. Oh, don't brew me. Don't brew me. So that's a good one. That's a good one to pay attention to. Um, it's not that she's trying to bite me, but when I go to groom her, what she's going to do is try to tell me to just scratch really hard right there. And she's going to do that by trying to groom my body. It's a very natural horse behavior. So because I've been around horses a, a little bit, um, I'm, I'm quite, she's got this, such a strong desire to groom me because she really wants a harder scratch. So she's yelling at me. I mean, I've not seen her yell this much at me to scratch harder. So I'll do that and then she'll stop requesting me to do a thing. Just bear with me. <laughs> I sort of concentrate on not getting chomped on. And it's not a bite that says, no, don't. It's a bite that says, uh, more. So my hand is kind of ready, like not, not, a, not so much as, I kind of, I'll do a, a block. Each butt. She's never kicked out at me. Um, she's never, tried to, I mean, I think in the very beginning, maybe she, can I use two hands? It's easier. Um, she's never, she's never tried to uh, do anything that, I mean, in the very beginning, sorry, in the very, 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 very beginning, she sort of uh, tried to get me to hurry up with food kind of thing a little bit. It was sort of uh, almost instantaneous, maybe even up. And then since then, she's just a massive fan of, well, scratches. So she definitely doesn't want me to go away. Anymore. I'll get hungry. Just a lot of work. Excuse me. So that's a good catch. I'm going to see if I can download that and check that out later. Nope. Back up. I'm wrestling with a horse. I don't really want to wrestle with horses. Ideally, I would just do that on her nose. It's not a great idea to come in and do this, so I'm actually demonstrating something bad, but sometimes, I, what I call it, when you, when you know the rules, you know you're breaking them, prepare for the thing that you know you need to prepare for. But ideally, we would just sort of push on the nose because that's the indicator that we're gonna use far into the future, or even here in the future when we have a halter on. And we want them to back up. It's gonna be pressure on the nose. Leave. I don't want her coming into my space too much. Right. So, uh, what's come of the hernia? The hernia is much smaller, which is good, um, but there's a very, very good chance. I know what you want. There's a very, very good chance she's going to need some surgery. Just to, I mean, 
if if it is a hernia and, and, and it needs fixing on the inside, can you back up? Thanks. Uh, a lot of requests from this little one. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah. So the if it needs fixing inside and if there's any tissue in there that is not good, if we leave it in there, it should just get another infection. I don't want you coming crossways to me. Stay over there. Thanks. What she'll do is she'll cut this way because I've indicated that I'm willing to give her solid scratches and a spot that's very hard for her to reach. Usually another horse would call groom with her, but because she's still in quarantine, we give a month of quarantine. So because she's still in quarantine, nobody can come over and scratch her other than a human, a human being. That's not gonna, we're not going to get the lice or the ticks or the bots. Um, I mean, they can rub off and we'll be clean and, and wash and so we go and handle other horses. So, but horses don't do that and they just transfer really well. So be very attached to that. She's also quite, quite calm and quite happy just to be together, which is lovely. Okay, so surgery is a maybe. I'm going to find out hopefully today uh, from the vet yesterday. Vet visit yesterday on what is going to, what should happen, what is a good idea to make happen. Well, yeah. But I'll have to trailer her, take her to a hospital, a vet hospital, or a vet office, or whatever they're called. Okay, she's going to the table. I'm just going to cut across and, you know, um, and then uh, take her in there. So coming into places like this, leading and working with her quite a bit is vital. Uh, I think the next thing I'll be doing is working with the trailer, uh, which may or may not be a problem. Rub it on the table right now. So. Okay, so that's sort of the health update. It's a common uh, set of uh, questions that I get in. How Whoa! It's <laughs> a crash bang. Hey, get off my table. Thanks. Jeez, so mock table over in the camera. So, um, other than that, uh, other than that, she's doing fantastic. Um, her work, let me see if I can, I don't know, if this is, I hope, hopefully the camera will stay focused in. Uh, and let's see. Okay, so funny thing about this is we've already done this today. This is not a new endeavor. So let's try one more time. Good. Okay, so this is one of the things that I've been working on. It's not just getting a blanket sort of on her. Um, it's all the work that's don't rub on my table again. It's, it's in, it's working on the idea of how we move, how we interact, how we not move, how we stop doing things, uh, all these things that say, you know, this scary thing is not so scary. It's no big deal. not so much the thing itself. The thing itself is just a, you know, a happy <laughs> sort of a tool that we get to use to do all the other things. Cause we're gonna, she's gonna have a lot of things done with her. But this is a good start. It's a nice soft 
blanket. It's no big deal. It's not heavy. It doesn't hurt. You know, all those kinds of things are vital. Uh, important thing when it comes to working with horses. We don't want to cause any pain. Right? Let's make it a bit bigger. So she thinks about it. She has a good think. She, she wonders if this is a good idea and I get to work with her on that part. Okay. So that's just sort of uh, an update on her health, update on the stuff we're working on for training, um, and sort of the trajectory that she is in. Uh, once her quarantine is done and all finished up, then she will be integrated into the herd one at a time. So another question that comes up, uh, when are you gonna do it? Well, it should be soon, I'm hoping this week. Uh, her third delousing has been finished yesterday, so it'll give that a couple of days to take a strong effect. Um, kill off anything that's left on her. And, uh, and then out and about. The hernia, oh, that's another question. The hernia, will it affect her in her future? No. Does it affect her being able to play? No. Uh, she still runs around and does everything. She's, she's much more comfortable now. No fever, no uh, infection, uh, which we can tell by doing a blood test, which we did yesterday. And, um, and she's eating really well. She's a very healthy eater, for that matter. Very, very healthy. And uh, so next steps, obviously, continue training, continue working with the blanket, continue working with the lead rope, head out into the forest, change the environment, work with the trailer, all those kinds of things that we expect horses to be able to do. Mess with them. Touch their body, trim their feet. Yeah. <laughs> hug them a lot. Yeah, you need lots of hugs. Lots of hugs. Hugs, of, hugs and love and care and all these kinds of things that bring a lot of comfort and happiness. She's just a big love bug now. It's no problems. You can maul them. It's just kind of weird. It's super weird. Don't get me wrong. I know it's super weird, but. The best thing that they, the, when they when you see horses together, the best thing that you see, or I see, for sure, is when they're really close and they can rub against each other and they can they can co-groom and they can they can rest next to each other. Sometimes they put their chin on each other's backs and all kinds of stuff like that. So that stuff, while it doesn't look weird when horses do it, it is a little strange when we do. But sooner or later, we are going to. I mean, we're not going to probably, but somebody will want to. Why are you so worried? Look this way. Yeah, see? No big deal. Okay, look that way. See? No big deal. Uh, somebody's going to ride. Somebody's going to be back here more and sitting on top of her and doing stuff. In fact, I'll probably start that with her like I have with Annie, where we will do riding from the ground. It's a big deal. And you've got to be able to, got to be able to sort of give my headlock and and touch the top of their head, and I know you're not a big fan of that. No, you're not. Look at how angry she is. Can you see her angry eyes? Get off of me. And then she just sort of melts into it a little bit. Well, I guess I'll put up with this head nubbins. It's weird, but useful. So there you go, baby, little baby horse stuff. Uh, what else is a common question that comes through? What else have we got? All of the questions regarding the wildies and how they are managed and all that stuff is all sitting on the second channel called Stable Horse Training Academy. It's where I just put Q&A. So I, I will take tidbits of things that I've done or answer specific questions, and they just get answered there. There's no long monologue about squirrels running around and whatever. Um, so that's where all of that really gets answered in detail. Um, those are the common questions. So we spent a lot of time with her here, which is good. I will check the chat. What do you think? Let me check the chat, see what's going on over there. Whoop. Whoop. You have to put up with it. Lots and lots. Yeah, I'm not forcing her. It's a light hand on this side. I just ask her over. Say, hey, come back to me. Yeah, I know. 
OK. So a lot of that. That's what a lot of my work is usually kind of quiet work, kind of um, things that she's adverse to, touching her tail. Or, no, no, no. I don't want you rubbing on this. She's just going to knock it over. Yeah, go rub on something else. No. OK, pick up. Yeah, off she goes to explore a little. Okay, let's check out the chat. Seems there's 94 of you in here. Fantastic. Thanks for showing up, everybody. It's an off the cuff live stream. Sparky Bacon. Hello, Sparky Bacon. Hello, baby girl. And Vivian. There's a message that's held for review. View message. It's a happy face. This message is held for. Show it. It's just a happy face. Show. Oops. Okay, that was weird. Uh, Desert Equine Riders here. Hello. Smiley's here. Do your horses ever get oats? Never. Old and still here. Hello. Literally an angry moose. <laughs> hello. And hello, Hershey and Judith. How many horses per year come into your program? One. Why? Because it costs a lot of money and it takes up a lot of space. And I don't want to... One of the, actually is a great question, one of the explanations that I always give is there are so many places that want to rescue so many horses, but in the case of an emergency or a problem or a hay shortage or something like that, that's when things start to fall apart. And there are quite a few of those out there that have too many horses because they want to keep rescuing them and whatever they want to do, whether they got, whether they got a big heart or they just want to make lots of videos, or, I don't care. Either way, it's irresponsible to, in my opinion, it's irresponsible to rescue more horses than you can manage under uh, stress. So management of the horses for taking care of them, uh, teeth and hooves and body and all that kind of stuff, hay as well. Um, if you push yourself too far, the only, the only one that, that the main one that suffers is the horse. So one a year right now. Um, if, if I had more space and more cash, I'd probably do two. Um, because then it becomes more viable of an option to do such a thing. So, good question. Kim's here. Hello, Kim from Texas. Terry, hello, Terry, also from Texas. Sam's here from the UK. Hello, Sam. Roddy's rule is here. Looks like Mr. Wild. Yes, she does. Terry says, how long to stay in quarantine? Uh, should end this week. Um, but we want to make sure that... Um, She's clear of all of her parasites first. I don't want to give parasites to other horses. It'd be a real pain in the butt. Lead Belly's here. Hello. Hello, Jill. Nadia the mare is here. One month total, I think. She answers. Yep. One month is generally the quarantine. The table's a big hello, we're at. Rocky's mom, aka G Ma. She also answers one month. Uh, Jane says, if Mocha needs surgery, I wonder how long it'll take for her to heal. Meh, yeah, a week or so. I don't expect very long at all. Be very small cut. <laughs> and uh, a few stitches, and uh, and that'll be that. It won't be a big deal. I don't expect. Don't get me wrong. Don't put your head through. She's, yeah. yeah, she's up. She's mad at me. She says, I want to put my head through the fence. But she does it, and then she's, she has to twist her head. Yeah, that's why I wanted to be with her, so that I can discourage her from crazy stuff, because it's not good. <clears throat> She can't get her head stuck in the fence yet, but if she were to get older, there's a chance there'd be some trouble. So I don't expect surgery to be a big deal. I think anything that really comes from the surgery will be uh, maybe a little bit of rest um, and, or you know, just not running around so much. Um, and also if there's any infection that might come from it. So to keep more medicine. Johanna's here from Finland. Hello. Lead Belly says, nice to see you hugging her every single day. Tanau is here. Hello. Uh, Unicorn says, I don't know what you're saying. I think it's hello. It doesn't translate it for me, and I don't read. I'm not sure what language it is. Sam says, reminds me when a baby doesn't want its nose wiped. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Zenko Hirabi is here. That's an interesting username. Hello. Hello, Chris Pendleton. Uh, yes, she is very calm and confident. It's great. Hello, Amy and Brenda. 
Uh, Emily's here. Hello, Emily. Who do you think Moko becomes friends with? Everybody. I think she will be uh, a friend with all of them. I think it would be wonderful. Um, or she will be wonderful, sorry. But uh, I think if she has any trouble, it might be Lena. Maybe. Because I think Lena just doesn't want to tolerate uh, babies or too much play, perhaps. I'm not really sure. Hello, little one. How's it going? We've come back for more ear rubbings. She says, stop it. Stop it. Whoa. <laughs> stop it. But we got to keep doing it. We got to keep bugging her. We got to keep um, trying to get her to not be adverse to that. Because if she ever gets an injury on the top of her head or her ear or something like that, I don't want her chucking her head around all over the place. So we're at the beginnings of that. And it's all... Uh, Hey, don't do that. Just leave. Leave the corner. Hmm. Liberty work is always fun. With a halter on, you get to cheat. A halter is a massive cheat. In my opinion, I know it's a cheat. I use it as a cheat as well. Um, and I mean it in a way that if, if I was rubbing the top of her head, no different than when I hug her and I rub the top of her head, she's not going to chuck her head around nearly as much. Put a halter on, they're not going to chuck their head around nearly as much. Um, she's also not going to show as many behaviors that are more dangerous with a halter. <laughs> this wants to be in the corner because all the friends are up that way. So let's ask her to go somewhere else. It's okay. Now, generally, I'd go with her, but I'm talking with you guys. So, okay. Sam says, "Do you find wild easier to work with than domesticated horses?" Easier is such a subjective term, and it's hard to define that exactly. Uh, I would say, let's see. Um, yes, I guess in general, is it a net easy? So over, over all of it, is it easier? Yes. Um, I find or have found um, the uh, let's see the best way to put it I think is that the trauma that gets left behind intentional or unintentional by humans in the domestic horses affects them for years especially as babies plenty of babies are um, handled in ways that leaves trauma in them and then as they get older, that trauma causes a thing. And then somebody reacts to that out of worry or fear, usually not in a good way. It places a little bit more of the trauma back in there instead of taking it out. I think some of you probably follow Warwick. I follow a little bit of his stuff. And he talks about it quite a bit in regards to foals. And I'm a big fan of that. Um, he, he discusses... The topic of trauma in a way that I think is quite understandable and examples that he's able to show himself. And so I think when it comes to working with the wildies, the only trauma, or at least in our case, where they're not rounded up in a destructive, a fully destructive way, um, in our case, the only trauma we're really dealing with is sort of losing their herd and their friends. And if you can replace that, horses live in the moment quite well. So if they can make some new friends and whatnot quite quickly, then you're in good shape, which then makes it, all in all, makes it uh, good. Another horse that knocks over barrels. It's just, she's rubbing on it, so it's going to fall over. So I guess in that regard, when it comes to training, because when you build that trust, it seems to be sort of an epiphany moment for them, that they kind of figure it out a little bit better they feel like they're probably in a safer space a little bit more when with you because of that. That makes sense. That's what makes it easier. But working with horses is a scary thing to do. It's always a worry. They're very fast, they're very big. So in that regard, no easier whatsoever, if that makes sense. You're still at risk of putting fear in them. You're still at risk of them saying no and, and acting out that no. Um, you're still at risk at, of not 
paying enough attention to uh, tune out. And then something just happens. You know, you may have no history of a thing happening and suddenly it happens. So there's none of that is easier whatsoever. But in fact, there's no difference. It's not neither easier nor harder. That belly's given five euros. Thank you very much. Straight to the vet bill. <laughs> Two vet visits is, yeah, and the third surgery probably. Martine's here. Hello, Martine. Uh, Echo's here. Poking in. Love the updates on Mocha. You're very welcome. Bethany's here. Hello, Bethany. Uh, Amy's here. Have the other horses seen her besides Annie next to her called out to each other? Do they take notice of her? Um, Lena does, and Yoka does. The rest of the horses don't seem to care too much at the moment. And Annie will call out when we come back. Sometimes Lena does as well. Uh, Lisa's here. Hello, Lisa. Uh, thanks for taking the time to introduce to a session. Hello from Edinburgh. Emilia's here. Hello. Martine says, they learn by themselves, except when situations put them in danger when you have to intervene. Mm, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. They do sort of pick up things. Uh, you know, like a barrel falls over and she's like, oh no. And then she comes back to it. So she'll learn that by herself. But putting her head through the fence, not something I really want her to get, get too comfortable with. Brenda says, glad she's progressing well. Infection has passed. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I am too. I'm glad it took effect. Barbara says, thanks for your videos. You're welcome. Kim says she's done with children. Lena's, Lena's never had any children, so I think she's just not interested in playing with them. Uh, Allie's here. When is the surgery for the hernia? I don't know. Uh, diagnostic was yesterday. We're getting a second opinion. Hopefully that will come in today. I will hassle my veterinarian. Lady is here. Hello, Lydia. Brenda says, I believe that they know you're helping them. I'm not completely convinced of that at all. Actually, I think they have no idea. <laughs> Sorry. I don't think horses have any clue. Uh, until you've done something enough times like if you if a horse got caught in a fence and they freaked out and you came over and helped them they got caught again they half freaked out and you helped them and then the third or fourth time you walk up to them and they go you're going to get me out of this in, in such a case yes but i don't think medicines or surgeries or any of those things really take effect um, as for training i think they just kind of put up with us <laughs> i don't know if they know about what help is other than the scratching if you're referring to that i'm not sure what you're referring to but those are the things that i think about uh no 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 not my table not my table stay away be a good horse be good you can take ownership of objects by the way uh 100 i do it all the time when i'm doing groundwork with people uh we'll use the barrels because they're handy um to use as a spacer and uh, i'll say to people look the barrel is is a child pretend it's a child you don't want the horse to touch go near hit kick bite whatever the barrel that's a vital thing and so you, they people just get kind of good at that uh sparky bacon says as someone who works with dogs part-time i find it fascinating how much overlap there is between dog packs and horse herds obviously there are a ton of differences but i love watching them interact yep i agree or uh, a gaggle of children you know what i mean yeah, humans as well. So you watch kids together, or you have to raise a kid. That and horses is very, very um, similar. Aileen is here. Sue is here. Hello, Sue. Poison some sea. Aileen, hello, Aileen. So it's back to the same fence and repeatedly gets you a bit of defiance. No, there's no defiance there. What you're looking at is a horse that is drawn to the other horses. And so. If I send her and she she gets startled or surprised or whatever, there's she might touch the ball. That's great. Um, she's, there's no defiance. So just please don't look at it like that. Yeah. Oh, hello, Ida. Josephine loves the way she pushed the barrel over. Yeah, it's fantastic. Another, another horse that knocks my barrels over um sam says it makes sense wondering if the human interaction from birth made a difference yes i do think it makes a difference i'm not a fan of uh baby mauling when they're born um 
I think a, a quick vet check and and actually Warwick did a fantastic video <clears throat> or talked about an incident that happened where he let a horse go when it struggled instead of letting it go when it stopped struggling and I think he is dead on. Uh, so I think a lot of uh, sort of ac over acclimation to humans when they're born is detrimental to a horse's future life. It may make it easier for the human but they retain that trauma and it just catches up to them. <clears throat> Maybe not all of them, but. And I have no way to prove that. It's just a theory. Uh, what do you think would be an ideal way to handle the Wiley situation as a whole? Huh. Um, as a whole, I think the government should. And this goes across North America. This is my opinion. It's never going to happen, I don't think. But uh, the cattle industry is very large. It's overly large takes up a lot of land, we don't have enough resources, and the human industry is too large. It takes up a lot of land, takes up a lot of resources. If those two could give in to our wild animals, and that goes across the world, and this is a big topic, I don't want to get into it, but we're talking lions and tigers and elephants and, you know, frogs even, all these endangered species, rhinos, you know. So horses is... Yeah, it's another just card in the deck of these animals that are just running out of space. They need more space, they need more resources, more food, more water. And we have to be able to give it to them. So the only one that's going to be able to do that is the government. There's not enough private land ownership to allow that. Other than our reserves here in Canada, which are getting a little bit bigger thanks to laws. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully that, yeah, helps. I don't know. Dan's here. Hello, Dan. She's de decaffeinated today. Nah, she's been pretty active. We've been in here for a little bit. I mean, just this stream alone, we've been in here for 37 minutes, and I've been in here before that for another 30. So we've done some action. <laughs> Diane's here. Hello. Wish they knew we were helping. Oh, God, I can't even count how many times I've said to a horse, God, I'm just trying to help you. And they're fighting something, usually the medicine uh, or a shots. Um, uh, take a blood test. Uh, inspect a, a wound, you know, they, they're just, you're, we're trying to help you, can you please calm down, you know, and they don't, so, but I think over time, if you have a good practice at making a horse feel good, and that is primarily going to come from daily, 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 daily scratches, I mean, you are just the big, the best and biggest member of the herd ever, then you will more likely have a good chance at dealing with wounds or uh, problems with her. Hi. Look, you made it all the way up to me again. This time I'm going to control your nose <laughs> just a little bit. Come here. Come here. I get it. It's a body weight. So just go quickly, okay? Yeah. No. Stay with me. Is it a rub? Yeah. Your eyeballs over the top of your head. Good girl. Now she's got to rest her chin on my arm. And we'll rub the back of her head a little bit. There. I don't know if you guys can see that. But that's the idea. That's what we're looking to do as often as we can, every single day. Okay, moving on. Echo says she's a troublemaker. Ha! A little bit. <clears throat> Lydia says, I love your videos. I learned so much about horse behavior and understanding them better. Also, how to see things to their eyes and talk their language. You rock. Thanks. Appreciate that. Always nice to hear nice things. Love it when people are spreading positivity on this channel. On a side note, I don't think I have deleted or banned so many comments in such a long time. Uh, I've had some very angry people uh, complaining that that I'm, I'm, I'm taking in a wild horse against their will or I'm doing something illegal or poor horse or something like that and just think, oh no, not here, not here. We are a land of positivity here. Judith sends in $20. Thank you, Judith. Thank you very much. Um, Brenda says, as you train and provide her food, she comes to trust you. Yes, 100%. Although food is not a trust maker. I want to address that briefly. Hey, can you back up so we can both be in the camera? One, two, three. Okay. So trust is... Um, being a food provider is a fantastic thing. You, you will be looked at as 
useful. Um, you will be looked at as a being that shares food. But I don't think that trust comes from sharing food. Uh, I think trust comes from uh, addressing a worry or a concern or a fear and saying, this is a super safe place to be. I should be able to make her blind. And she should say, everything's cool. I'm, I'm touching her. And if I flinch, she has every right to flinch as well. But if I stay steady and calm, she should stay steady and calm. That trust comes from managing her fears, taking down her concerns, uh, and, and reinforcing all of the uh, the techniques or methods that we use to calm them. So I've had a few people complain that I touch a horse's face too much. If I was touching her face too much, which is absurd by the way, I'd ignore it, anybody who says that. But if I do this enough, she would just literally fall asleep in my arms. She would just go quiet. Um, and this works for every horse. I haven't seen a horse yet in the southern months, hopefully. It's very peaceful, very calm, very sensitive spots on their face. <laughs> You've had me touch your mouth so much, there, there shouldn't be any trouble anymore. No, you should have no trouble. Because <laughs> of the medicine. Good. So trust is built um, yes, through care, through time, uh, but I want to, uh, I wouldn't want anybody to walk away from anything that I've done said, well, feeding her has given her that, other than to have a good environment. So it is part of it, but it is a very small part of it. We don't want to treat train or treat, treat trust horses. Um, Nadia says, are you talking about Warwick Schiller? I was. Okay, Martine says, it's funny how animals, whether domestic or wild, we interact with them and understand the no and the gesture that goes with it. Sure, it's loud and, and big and, and everything. I think every animal. Hey. Okay. You're too close. There you go. Um, yes, I mean, I think <laughs> any sort of violent reaction or sort of big reaction or, or, or loud sound is always going to uh, alert. Now, horses, their amygdala is so big part of the brain that reacts to stuff and sends them don't no because look i don't want to manage you that's just it just stay back there you're comfy be cool stay and their amygdala the part that reacts to stuff is so active that their body is just you know like a wound up spring they just, pew, they're gone so if i were to clap right now her body flinches you see it's an immediate flinch it's 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 subconscious um, and it shows concern which is good survival mechanism plenty of humans that don't have a good enough survival mechanism and stuff so yeah uh, Ida says you're doing great thank you uh, building on previous knowledge yes I'm trying to um, what I'm actually also trying trying to oh Brenda says wild animals in general deserve our protection 100% Brenda you are on it um, what I have been, back up, thanks. What I've been trying to do with this channel as well, uh, not only highlight these amazing little horses, because they are quite amazing, but each and every one that comes in, I get to sort of practice a thing that I did. Because I take video of all of it, I can evaluate. I'm actually, I was just talking to my vet about this yesterday. It was a great conversation. But I'm able to reevaluate whether or not I'm effective, ineffective, the speed of my effectiveness. Uh, or ineffectiveness for that matter, and then modify. And I have found it to be good, a good learning experience when working with, with the wildies compared to the domestics because I'm dealing with a completely different issue with domestics. The story that I usually tell, <clears throat> because it's the most drastic of stories I've ever, or, or horses I've ever had to deal with, was one that was um, truly fearful, truly fearful of humans. But it looked, uh, as even put in these columns, it looked defiant. It looked uh, sassy. It looked um, 
uh, angry or something, but it just straight dangerous. But what this horse really was was just deathly afraid of humans. You could tell that the owners were probably not nice, to just put it mildly. And at 45 minutes it took for me to just get this horse to stop running around and trying to kick and trying to rear up. It reared up at least 30 times. And each time I would just stay sort of chill. And I, I mean, so I want to do, a, I'm going to do a video on fear. I, cover, I talked a smidge about it in today's training video, but I'm going to do a whole video on fear again. Um, and what it means for us, what it means for them, uh, how to deal with it, because it still infiltrates my thought process as well. It's still scary. I still, oh, sorry, I still, um, feel it <laughs> but the way we demonstrate show that fear the way that we put out our concern mostly subconsciously but plenty conscious fear um, is vital when working with them both for them and us okay. anyhow so I don't know 45 or so minutes in I could finally get close enough to touch and just be soft and quiet and just teach this horse that I had a different intent because it had my intent wrong the whole time don't blame it don't blame it based on the people that own the horse just I never went back uh, and I taught that horse that it doesn't have to be worried Hey, can I borrow your attention? Thanks. Um, and then, yeah, we just turned into what you're looking at right now. So every horse has this ability to gain, to get that trust and how we get it and, and that kind of thing. So, um, so yes, Ida, I'm trying my best. Look at her just come. I don't want to always be hugging you. I need to look at the chat too. Stay there for a minute. Stay. <laughs> Uh, so I'm trying to always build on that, the things that I can learn. I learn most through these little little wildies, or big wildies even, with Mr. Wild. He was, he was four when he arrived here. No, 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 no. You're just... Uh, okay, back up. Thanks. Let's stay there. Uh, Olives is here. Hello, Gloria. Uh, she is adorable, isn't she? Who are you going to introduce her with first and why? I don't know yet. I'm not sure. I haven't sorted that out just yet. I'm still thinking. It's not decided. Actually, it's probably the best way to put it. I haven't decided yet, but I will. Han MT is here. Hello. Thanks for doing this live stream. You're welcome. What made you and your daughter choose Mocha out of all the horses in her holding pen? Uh, great question. Uh, if you rewind, you'll see it, but I'll answer it real quick. Just having a yawn. Can you please back up? Everybody wants to see more of you than your ears and your eyeballs. Just if you're going to hang out, we need a full body. <laughs> I'll go hang out with her in a second. Um, what made me we, we just chose her. It's actually, here we go. So um, she was one of five that were available. There were more, obviously, you guys, if you haven't seen the video and the um, second channel, the interview, but she was, there's a bunch of others in there. But she was one of five that were available. And something about her, somebody had put it, I think it was Paula that wrote, she, somebody had asked that, she says, I bet, I bet he chose the one that was least likely to be adopted. Like Annie or Mr. Wild, both horses that nobody wanted. Um, and so she was kind of sort of this meek, hiding under everybody else, small, sort of small. She's the smallest of all of them. Um, and I oh, thought I saw something move. And I did not. So um, she just looked like she needed a really good friend. So that was it. I mean, obviously it didn't inspect her. If I knew she had a hernia, I might've been like, eh. But she had the medical care she really needed. She had an infection. So I, I've wondered about it. You know, there's some kind of fate. There's some kind of energy in the world that just says, yeah, she was meant to be here. 
you know, hard to say, but visually she's the smallest, just kind of meek and quiet. And she just looked like she'd be a pretty good friend to have and a friend to make for her. Okay, moving on. Um, keep this cutie away from Gracie, says Josephine. Uh, is that a white spot of fur under her forelock? No. Now that she's right up here, we can see she's got... Oh, stop. She's got sort of... Come here. Stop. 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 Okay, hang on. Let me work on this. Yeah, I know. Life's rough. Life is so rough. No. Um, so what we're looking at there, hopefully you guys can see that, is just missing here. So that happens because they rub and they rub and they rub and they rub thanks to lice or ticks or something like that, and they just rub their hair off. So now that she's been deloused and taken care of and all that stuff, that should grow back. Get a little closer. Yeah. So it's just missing hair, um, but that'll grow back. No big deal, because it's underneath her forelock and her mane, right? Nice, warm, cozy places up north, east, where it's colder, and that's where all the bugs will live. They'll live under nice, toasty parts. Tail, forelock, mane. So you really got to get in there. Little C is here, says Mocha is an absolute perfect name for her. Another while they saved. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Yes. We're trying... Okay, so why don't we just move the camera this time? Beautiful day today. I'll just shuffle my way around. I don't know if it's going to affect... The internet connection's okay back here, but not the greatest. Hopefully it's still okay. Okay, moving forward. Ida, $20. Thank you. And Timmy's? All right. Timmy's is a coffee slash donut shop around Canada here, if you're not Canadian. It's kind of like a cheaper Starbucks sort of thing. Don't don't rub on that. No. Okay, moving on. Uh, Brenda says, touch is so important. Yes, food is probably a good environment. Yes, I agree with you, Brenda, 100%. <clears throat> a good environment can go a long ways to um, sort of building the area around the foundation of the relationship if that makes any sense. So if you're building a house and the foundation and the relationship is the house, then the land around it is uh, just as important. So that would be a food, a safe place, shelter, um, water, clean water. Don't do it. You've already... Let's move some stuff around here. Look at Just a little side eye. Uh, let's see. Vwat is here. Just hopped on. How is her hernia? Could she hang out with the herd? Uh, it's coming along okay, and not yet. The camera's a bit too low to see your face. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, as she lost some of her hair before, is it damage or parasites? Uh, it's too much scratching. XTY says, where's Zeus? He's in the house probably snoozing. Jade Frost gives a hundred Ron. What's a Ron? Thank you, though. I don't know what a Ron is, but thanks for all the Rons. Um, Nadia says to Snuggly Noka. Chris S. is here. Hello, Chris. Want to get closer? Elaine says, I think she's sterling. I think that means a good thing. Sterling, like silver. You've done a great job with her, and I love ho I love horses. Old lady now, do not have any more, but I enjoy watching you. Thanks for watching. Annie is here. Hello, all wild. He's a mocha. Sue says, big scratchy thing. Yeah, no kidding. Sugar pie says fate, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, out of the corner. Keep traveling horse, keep traveling. Uh, Emily says, do you think she was acting meek in the round pen, and, or in the roundup pen when you saw her because of her hernia and fever? It's very possible. Yes, not feeling well. She's going to. But on the same note, we do hear a lot about horse psychology that they don't want to act weak or they'll get picked off. She could just be sort of lower on the herd overall. Just uh, She's smaller, right? She's just the smallest of the bunch. Um, but yes, very, very possible. Some people have surmised that, that she's so amicable to being um, trained because she's got a fever or a hernia or something like that. And 
I heard the same stuff about Annie. I heard the same stuff about Mr. Wild. They're all easier to train because they're not feeling well. I don't know. Is could that could that be a thing? We'll never know. Um, but I guess I'm trying to bring in, in what we refer to as as many data points as possible. The data points meaning that as many horses to show you, it's not a fluke. You know, um, we can we can wonder for sure, but at the very least, so what? So then you get a BC Wildy that's got some problems and it's easier. You just got to deal with a few medical things, which is fantastic because it means that I can walk up to her and I can, I, I've can i already done all the getting medicine. And if I have to do more antibiotics, which I'll probably have to do when she gets a surgery, it won't be a problem. She needs deworming again, won't be a problem. She needs needles, shouldn't be a problem because we've done it all in a big, good, healthy go. Something just moved in the forest. We have coyotes. Uh, I saw some bear scat. Uh, we definitely have deer. I don't know, something's out there. Okay, moving on. 100% um, uh, fate. Could be. Could be. Roddy's rule says, agree on the fate thing seems to find us in fit. Yeah, you know, it, it just, it's a nice explanation. We don't have to, we don't have to prove it. We can think it a lot. Um, and you got to wonder, like, how do some things happen? Uh, but we'd have to view all of life like that. So that's kind of a hard one. Some are choices, some are fate. Brenda believes in fate and destiny. She's meant to be here. <clears throat> I mean, if we look at it, what if another one had, had that and we didn't get them? Was that one destined to die from infection? See, that makes me sadder, right? We love, I think a lot of us really love the idea that fate and destiny come into play when it's a really positive thing, like right now. Um, what if, I don't know if we want to go down so many suppositions, but we went through the idea that, you know, something bad happened because I brought her here. Like, if she wasn't here, a thing wouldn't have happened. I don't know. So it could be just chance, just a fluke. Who knows? It doesn't matter. Uh, Jade Frost says that you have the vet visit. Yes. Two vet visits. Is the infection gone? Yes. The vet said he thinks she needs surgery, but he's going to double check with somebody who's smarter than him. Um, which I said to him, but you're my smart guy. You're the guy I ask all my questions to. So, but he he doesn't he does do some surgery, but a surgeon, a proper somebody who does surgery all the time, is a better option. Moving on. Nanny's here. Hello, Nanny. She says she's so cute. 20 euros from Han MT. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. Straight to the vet. It shall go. But yeah, I appreciate that very much. Because of very... RON is Romanian currency. Oh, well, thanks. Romanian currency, eh? Hmm. Thank you. Uh, Gloria says, Sorry if you mentioned this already. Does she need surgery draining of the hernia? Yes. Probably. Not sure yet. It's 95% there. We don't really know. Uh, I said, I hope not. <laughs> I'd like not to pay for another vet visit. She's already... That's what I said to Haley. I said, uh, my daughter who chose her, I said, well, you're going to be doing a lot of chores to pay for your new horse because she's expensive. I mean, they all need a vet visit in the beginning for the Coggins test and to check her out and, um, uh, you know, all around general stuff. But... Uh, an MRI, or sorry, not an MRI, uh, an ultrasound plus, uh, wait, no, 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 don't do it, you monkey, uh, plus, um, what's it called, <laughs> um, extra shots, because you got a tranquilizer for that, because she wasn't going to put up with it, ultrasound just rubbing away on her for that much time, and so, uh, she's, it's just funny. I'm just joking with her, obviously, but uh, it's some funny stuff. It's good, good joke material. Something's out there. Something's shuffling a little bit. What is it? Is it a deer? It might be a deer. It's probably just a deer. Or I've heard a deer. She's going to go check it out. She checked in with me. She says, do you want to go look? No, I'm good. Um, yes, yeah, so maybe to the surgery. Probably to the surgery. Very good chance to the surgery. Chris says, an Amish friend has two new Belgian foals, a colt, and a filly. Hmm. I haven't heard a single good thing about Amish people. 
Hopefully they're good. Uh, Jade Frost is 30 bucks, it says, so no media money. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Brenda, holy smokes. Brenda's chucked in 100 bucks for her vet bills. Thank you, Brenda. That goes a long ways. Uh, just having the vet out is close to 100 bucks. It's interesting. But that's fine. It's, it's, it's all these things that we, like I said at the very beginning, you know, how many do you get in? Try to get in one a year because we understand, we know that, that things are going to cost money and that's something to be prepared for and, and understand. But you guys are a big help. And I'm glad and I'm happy to be able to give back. I'm happy to be able to provide all kinds of extra information and ideas. Why? Why? But thank you, Brenda. Why are you here? What do you want? What is it? Are you bored? Want to go out? Should we leave soon? We've been at this for an hour, actually. Holy smokes. Do deer and your horses just ignore each other? Yes. Actually, Nadia, if you look over in the second channel, Stable Horse Trading Academy, I did a video specifically. What do the horses think of the deer? And they completely ignore them. It's a good little video, actually. Bonnie says, I'm here from Ar Arkans Ar Arkansas. I have Missouri Fox Charters. Just wondering if any of the wildies are gated. Nope, not so far. Nanny says she's put on some healthy weight. Yes, she has. Barbara, thanks for 20 euros. Number one, number one, little sticker thing, eh? Those things are cute. I wish I could do animation. Tippy's here. Hello, Tippy. You've done a great job with Little Mocha. Thank you. She is coming along very, very well. So tomorrow I'll put up a training video for everybody to watch where we work with the blanket. And whoa. And um, hopefully it'll be interesting. I don't know how many members are here. The number went away. But for everybody's or people are here that are paying attention, it does not say anymore. It went away. Um, so for everybody that's here, that'll be up tomorrow. She's done really, really well with putting on the blanket and managing it and wandering around and doing all kinds of uh, activities. We're trying to play with the ball a little bit more. Yes. Her teeth are good. She's got a very slight overbite that I'm hoping will be less as she gets older. But it's not bad. I mean, she's still able to eat grass really, really well. And it's, not a, it's not a big problem. Well, I'd say it's about a half inch overbite. Maybe, maybe half an inch. So, not too bad. Anyhow, I'm going to finish that here because um, we've been in here for quite a while. I want to get it back out. We're going to go get some grass, uh, more lead training. What? You got a problem? You got a problem? <laughs> you have to put up with me all day, every day, all the time. Good girl. So, that's our little one here. Thank you, everybody. Camera was too low. Uh, thank you, everybody, for, um, for being here. Thank you, everybody, for your good, friendly, kind encouraging and supportive comments thank you everybody for donating actually to help her out to help us out actually I, it, whenever i say that i kind of think it is a help for her but we were already going to help her so you're really just helping us and that helps us continue to do more uh within the um would you just stop reacting for once just one time thank you good girl uh it really helps us do these things and to continue to do these things because unexpected costs or unexpected costs which means i got to take time away from doing something to go do something to make money and i don't have a problem with that i'm not complaining about that it's just fact um, so every little bit does kind of assist and then it allows me to continue doing this more than another thing that would make up for the thing that is unexpected so not this time just stay Better. A little better. Good. Big hugs. And that's it. Okay. So, again, thank you, everybody. Uh, it's been awesome. It's been wonderful having you here. And uh, we're going to take off. But I will see you guys again tomorrow in her blanket training video. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, we'll leave her alone for now. I just can't stop. So, uh, that's it. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.